Hi everyone, my name is Eric Lanen. I'm a marketing consultant here at Redpath. And then I'm Daniel Hansen. I'm a Salesforce consultant here at Redpath as well. Oh, sorry. Really? We're, Just one second though, it's all right. Hey Steve. Yeah, I got a second. So last week we talked about how to be a better marketer. So if you want to see last week's video, go ahead and click right around here. So this week I got Dan here to talk about how to build better sales analytics. It's been on everyone's mind, and I know we've done a lot of videos about this before, uh, but Dan has a lot of experience in building out some very complicated forecasts uh, and reports and dashboards, mm -hmm. and really kind of getting at to not only the big picture, but also drilling into the nitty gritty of what are my sales reps doing and how can I replicate their success. So what I want to open up with today with, with Dan is kind of what are some of the prerequisites that you need uh, for your uh, to, to actually start tracking your your sales yeah. reps. Well, I think it's really good that you kind of started at that point because defining those prerequisites is really key to kind of getting those those end results and those end goals. And you, you might have an envision of mine, and you know you want uh, to track the overall revenue, or you want to see other companies' performance. But it really, what that drills down to then is what are the the expectations and the goals that you need to then define on a maybe it's a user basis, an industry basis, a product basis. But getting a clear understanding of what do you expect. Um, the metrics to be hitting, whether that's you know, actual monetary figures, whether that's um, interactions that need to be happening between your sales teams and clients. Maybe like that's, activities? Yeah, absolutely. Like activities or tasks, meetings that they're having. Maybe it's your own internal organization has certain metrics that need to be hit that understand and help you track to a certain goal and number. So really having a, a good defined um, you know, understanding of what it is that you need on a day-to-day -day or a monthly or a quarterly basis of what are your goals and expectations to be able to lead you to those end results that you're looking for? Cool. And then once you get there, I know that I think for every organization, you need to have a, kind of a quota pipeline. Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, a quota is huge, um, especially for, uh, you know, for your individual sales representatives who might be working for you. And so that not only do they understand what is it that they need to achieve, but they can also then maybe see where they're tracking. So whether it's for their own you know, introspective look at, you know, how am I doing as an individual or when you want to run the sales management meeting and you want to see how are my sales reps comparing to each other or maybe you're having a one-on-one -on -one with them and you want to see, well, here's what you did last month, but here's what you're doing for me this month. Having those defined quotas that go along with those expectations help drive those meetings. You know, they help save you time when it comes time to uh, retrieving those metrics. So if you've been able to, prior to the quota in the pipeline, define those metrics, you can then instill these quotas for them. So maybe you know they need to be making 25 calls a day. Mm -hmm. Maybe they need, need to be developing a pipeline this quarter of you know whatever X amount it is. If you have these quotas defined now, we can then start tracking towards them. And that's kind of just the, the birthplace of, of the, the beginning of the analytics that we can get, get with this. Yep. So what would you say are probably the most important uh, metrics if you were to break down your pipeline from top of funnel uh, of your quota, so mm -hmm. kind of getting down to here's my quota at the end that I'm trying to achieve with revenue, but what are those metrics that support a, a, obtaining that end goal? From what quota? I, yeah, so from what I've seen is it's the, um, it's the generation of new leads or opportunities and then also the activities taking place on those. So one thing that is really helpful to maybe know and understand is within your organization is how often are we typically creating new leads or opportunities or when are we getting them? And then maybe what's the typical lifespan or the life track of getting to a close sale? So that you maybe have an understanding of, you know, maybe we're getting 10 opportunities a month. It typically takes about two phone calls and three meetings to be able to lock somebody down to a point where they're actually um, closing a deal. Those are some important metrics to know and define prior so that when you're defining these, these quotas and these pipelines, you can understand and you can look at, say, okay, Johnny has created three opportunities this month. He's already had four meetings with them. How is that tracking towards what he's going to be doing? And then based on maybe the actual monetary or value size of this opportunity, you can see what maybe he's expecting to bring in in Q2. Mm. So if you start to really get an understanding of, you know, he's done 50% of the work we would typically expect to see on a, a deal before it's closed, and he expects to see that maybe closed March 1st, and it's a deal maybe valued at $1.5 million, you can start to really estimate what it is going to be coming in and when is it going to be coming in and then also tracking it towards the goals you've set for them. Got it. Cool. Yeah. So what would you say are the top three most important things for an organization to consider when building out their sales analytics? You know, when it comes to the analytics, uh, data is king. You need good data to make sure that what you're looking at and when you're, you're looking at your analytics that it makes sense. 
uh, you don't want to be looking for a report for this month and then find out that nobody's put in anything for the last six weeks. So yeah. <laughs> making sure data is in there, it's consistent, um, is going to be key. And defining the metrics for that data is another big piece of that is you want to make sure that not only are you getting in clean and consistent data, but you're getting in the relevant data for you. So maybe that is the product types or the subcategories of the products or maybe where the products are coming from. Define those metrics so that not only are you getting good, consistent data in, but it's relative to you. And on top of that, what those metrics help define for you is kind of this, this baseline. So that when you've defined these metrics, you're getting in consistent data and you're starting from point A. When you get to point B a year later, two years down the road, three years down the road, you can start looking at the, the metrics that you set in place to track at that point and you have a baseline to see how are we doing. Are, what's our, our true you know, scope of picture looking at, that we're looking at so we can see how we tracked you to your quarter to quarter, where are our slumps, where are our highs, what are our lows, and that gives you the, the overall picture of those, those mm-hmm. analytics. Yep. I know for one of your clients, uh, you built out a mechanism to track uh, marketing engagements and then how that would correlate with uh, account revenue. Mm-hmm. So doing some snapshots against that account, you could see, okay, at this point of the year, we were heavily engaged with them, and then the month after, we could see that spike in revenue growth. Yeah, absolutely. You know, that engagement is a, is a huge key, and that kind of leads into the one piece of it of defining those metrics so that you can see um, you know, if metrics are important to you of understanding when are we engaging the customer, track those. Make sure it's good and consistent, and then that helps you define the baseline so that you can see when are we tracking high and when are we tracking low. So it all comes in key to play with each other, but the, the data at the end of the day is what drives that. Okay. So let's end with some challenges then that, that you find are, are most typical for organizations that you've come across um, and kind of give your kind of two cents of how to avoid them. Yeah. You know, it kind of harkens back a bit to the data. And I know that that seems to get a bit granular, but the, at the end of the day is it, it drives what you're looking at and it drives the numbers that, that you're looking for for your reporting purposes. And so because of that, setting validations in place is really good, um, especially for the end users who are entering the data. If you can put validations within the system in place so that if they're closing a certain type of deal that you're requiring of them to enter in A, B, and C, so this way you can run the reports that you want, that's key. So setting those validations and not letting stuff slip through the cracks. And that leads into good training of the users. You know, the sales team or whoever it is needs to know what needs to be put in, how do we put it in, when do we put it in. Getting that key data into the system accurately and in a timely fashion is a really big piece of that. And once you have the data, you need to have the understanding of what are the reports we need. Uh, you know, am I interested or is my boss interested in a monthly report? Do they want to see quarterly? What are the analytics we track and against? Does he want, do we want, uh, you know, strictly revenue or do we want activities? You know, define the reports that are going to give you the big overall picture, but that you know what's driving those, that you get that true kind of analytical mm-hmm. side by side and not having reports that are stagnant. You want to be able to have reports that are constantly flowing with the company. And so when we say that, we mean dynamic reports within the CRM so that it's changing week to week, month to month automatically. So when you look at a report, you simply pull it up and it's accurate for what you're looking for at that moment. Yeah, it's kind of awkward rolling into a meeting. You're like, oh, well, this report was set for uh, last month. Uh, let me just go ahead and do that. You yeah, know? <laughs> yeah. you want to make sure you're coming in not only prepared, but if we can have the system be prepared for you, that saves you time and it, it gets you the accuracy you're looking for. And that's, mm-hmm. that's a really big key. Yep. All right, that's a wrap from us this week. Thank you, Dan, for chatting with us about sales analytics. Yeah, absolutely. If you want to see more of our videos, head over to our YouTube channel or on redpathcg.com. And if you have some questions about Salesforce, CRM, marketing automation, or anything in between, reach out to us on Twitter at Redpath Group. We'll see you next time.